see did it work is it live it is live let's switch this down my big face right there out in the open let's not do that let's see if this works This place is magnificent. Face a little bit. Uh, I'm going to join chat. I think I'm good there. Not entirely sure. We're not going to do that. I don't know why that was an option. It's kind of weird. Why are you doing it like that, did you producer? I think I'm good. I think I'm set. All of that. Can you hear me? Why? Oh, I can now. My volume is way down for some reason. I think we're good on everything. Just waiting for other people to jump in as needed. Which you, you already know two of the individuals, correct? Somewhat? Uh, maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> we will find out. Yeah, I might have seen them once or twice, but I don't know. I, I don't think I know them. Maybe. Yeah. You know of them? Channel, right? I am streaming on my channel at this moment. Should be. I don't know if it's actually working. I'm using a uh, iPad to oh. talk on Discord, and then I'm using Twitch to voiceover. So it's back and forth. Okay. You have a lot of electricity. Maybe. It's not. It's just. See if this works. See if this works. Hot. Dig it down. 
Nice. Okay. This place is magnificent. I do have voice. Uh, I'm gonna use. I'm trying to use the live sessions to kind of go back and look at things and re-listen to details to build on the next session. Okay. Kind of me tech, at least. Well, let's see. Uh, you want to go ahead and say something again? I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. You said you could hear something? Okay. So then maybe I need to do the Discord over on the computer as well. And I'll figure out another use for this. You still hear me? I can hear you. You want to give me another voice check? Can you hear yourself? You want to give me another okay. Uh, voice check. One, two. Still a little faint. Still a little faint. That's so, see. So that's good. I now know I need to fix that. Thank you, Rallin, for the follow. Thank you for coming in. I told them five. I told, well, I guess I told everybody five. But I went early because I want to get people to bed that need to be to bed, like the two from the UK. Uh, session zero notes. What I wanted to go over is getting everybody to get to know each other. Uh, determining and refining the actual schedule. So they're in the UK, they're about five hours. We do these sessions every Saturday or the Saturdays that we're gonna do them at five to six and they run longer. Uh, that puts them at two o'clock in the morning, potentially. Uh, so I wanna see if everyone's okay with doing it a little bit earlier in the Saturday for us, at least the USA folks. Right, how many people are joining? Uh, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, six people total. That's including myself with room for one more player. Uh, going over what we're going to use uh, for visuals, potentially. Depending if I can get things to work properly, uh, homebrew, tactics, uh, music, gore, violence, all that stuff, what everyone's okay with. Oh, yeah. Uh, character development. Setting boundaries. Yeah, setting boundaries and making sure everyone's okay with things and what's mm -hmm. not being okay with. That's really what a session zero is, is just developing rules and regulations and stuff like that. Uh, the biggest part is your scheduling and the character developments, which we are we've all already agreed on Saturday. It's just pushing forward and figuring out when to actually start on Saturday. Okay. Uh, and then I have questions specific to you guys, like uh, what's something you want to experience in D and D? What's something you want to accomplish with your character? Uh, what are you excited about with coming into the campaign? What would you like to see? Uh, what's bringing you here in general? Uh, 
what do you think would be a good reason for you guys to work together? Uh, you have your item that we discussed already. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm kind of using somebody else's backstory as well to tie you both together. So I, I don't think there's going to be a lot there to drive you apart in that aspect. I mean, uh, with the getting to know each other, you guys will go into your backstories and all that. That's where you'll really refine who you guys are as players. Right. Oh, someone else in, is in here. Teacher Tina. She'll be back. She's probably having uh, voice issues. Well, then the uh, the gentleman that was saying he's pouring concrete, he works down in, I want to say Florida, I believe is where he's at. He does construction a lot. He's working on a cool project of his own, which is what the concrete's for, I do believe. I don't think he was working today. I think he was just working on some personal stuff. Uh, he has been a forever DM. Oh, okay. Yeah. He, he was, I think, one of... If not my first, my first DM, he was the second DM I was under. And he's really pushed this drive for me to get there. So he's going to be helping out. Teacher Tina. Give me one minute. We are uh, really struggling over here. <laughs> you're good, you're good. Why? Why won't this do what you're supposed to do? Okay. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Well, oh. I, yeah, I can. I can too. Well, I'm using the guest computer because mine is not starting and I couldn't get the mic to set up. So, okay. We are just talking from my phone. <laughs> and I see. The cold deep down there. What do you want me to call you down there? Do you want me to call you by your real name or do you want me to call you by your character name down there, Mr. Muted? There we go. That's slightly less muted. Alright. Yeah. No, no, yeah, you can just call me Mike or call okay. me by the character's name. Either one, I don't care. I tried making my character on uh Hero Forge. Like, uh, I can mostly make it look like the description, but I can't find uh, insect things, so whatever. We can work on that. Uh, so what I was already letting Sky know is that we're really just doing the session notes for session zero, which is, uh, one, the players getting to know each other, two, determining the schedule. We already know we're going to be playing every other Saturday, uh, 
working out that actual starting timeline, which will probably be a little bit earlier than 5 p.m. EST, just because we have two joining us from the UK, uh, agreeing on rules and role playing and stuff like that. That way, everyone's comfortable with going forward. Uh, probably, in all honesty, probably be using a lot of BTT, which is already on D D Beyond or Tailspire. If able to, if not, we'll just stick to the BTT. Uh, establishing the campaign premise, uh, what I have in mind, what you guys have in mind, if it's where your questions that I'm going to ask you guys will come into play. Uh, using music, uh, how comfortable you guys are with gore, violence, um, adultness of a campaign, or vice versa. Uh, your character developments, you all have already made your characters, you already have a backstory of some sort. It's just tying you guys in together properly and moving forward with that. Uh, Mike, you've done this for 32 to like 60 years already. I know you're not that old. Uh, you, yeah, 100 years. Yeah, 100 years already. Uh, but for me being a new DM versus the new players coming in, it's uh, what you want to experience in D&D, what kind of accomplishments do you think you want as a character, as a player in general, uh, what are you excited about learning, doing in this campaign or what you're just excited about in general with D&D. &D. Uh, party cohesion, uh, how do you think your characters are going to play together, work together in the future? I mean, you've already discussed that a little bit with your character that you created today. Uh, everyone else, I kind of have their backstories and how we're going to, how I would like to work them in together. Two of them, I think, are going to tie in really well. Uh, and then, uh, already realizing I need to fix my Discord voice for the chat in D&D &D when streaming. What do you mean? Uh, the Twitch isn't picking up your guys' voices. It's only got mine. So I need to figure out how yeah. to get that properly transitioned. Uh, because I want to be able to just run through a session, finish it, and then take notes the next day or whenever before our next session. That way I can watch what we went through and then build off of that. Oh my God, you cannot crawl down the stairs. Yeah, I don't know uh, why it wouldn't pick up our voices if it's uh, uh, coming through even on Discord, but I don't know how Twitch works, so. It's a me issue. I'll fix it. Yeah, um, I mean, just one more thing to hammer out. Yeah, I think it's because it's not, the Discord is not on the computer, and it's on a tablet away from, you know, where you're streaming. I think well, that. maybe initially, now it's different role, no command, no big deal. No, I don't. Uh, cleric, I do not have that. At the moment, I will fix that if that's something you want. The basic player? No, uh, somebody in chat. The other two are both playing Dead by Daylight. Freaking nerds. So what does that command do, the, the roll command? Uh, so what that does, we'll roll a d20 in your chat, and they'll get something from it. it. But you, as the Twitch community, myself, would have to go in there and set those commands for it. I haven't finished setting it up. As I fidget with things around my desk. This 
is still just viewing me. Hmm. Yeah, I only see you. Are you supposed to have other stuff? No, I was just curious because usually it does show a bunch of stuff. So it's always been a headache when I do it on the computer because it does like five, six images and now it's not doing it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, how many times can you cast Healing Word as a cleric? So that depends on the level of the spell you're using. If you use it at lower levels, you should be able to use it more, but do you really want to? Because then you're wasting spell slots. I don't know if you have healing word at that level. Mike, do you have healing word at uh, level one for a cleric? Or is that dependent on who your deity is? I'd have to check, but usually the, the clerics, you know, get a level one spell and then uh, they get that lay on hands. Each. You can do that like five times a day, I think. I thought the power word, I'm pretty sure power words start coming in play at what, level level four, level five? I don't know, I don't actually use them a lot. Neither do I. <laughs> a healing word should be level one. Looking yeah, right. at some of the, the spell lists. Okay. Yeah, you start with two spell slots, so you can cast it twice at level one. Yeah, twice at level one. So, uh, which if you if you're casting that cleric, uh, that much, it's a lot of combat. Yeah, and also save them for after combat. Yeah. You might you might get more than one person beat up, but one of them might like literally have one hit point left or zero hit points, like be unconscious. Like with level one, man, any healing is great. Do we have a cleric? Uh, we do not. Or you? Okay, you guys do not have a cleric. Uh. Uh, I just have an individual in my chat named Cleric4675. He's asking questions. Something about being a cleric. It's in the rule book. It's what they told me. Uh, so casting it like a cantrip. Uh, I don't think clerics have... I think that would actually depend on who your deity is giving you that style of play. And what you have access to as a player so if you don't have access to uh, all the different source books and stuff like that it's really going to limit your capabilities so if you have a good dm or a new dm go ask them if you're able to do that if they allow it then they allow it you could do what i did today which is look up the uh class that you want because you know you heard of a cool ability and then on D and D Beyond, you can find the source book and just buy the subclasses for like a dollar ninety nine each, and you only have to buy the one you want. That's true. Uh, so, I don't know if you heard the individual or not through chat. Uh, you can look up what you want specifically, go to those source books, and buy that very specific ability for a dollar ninety nine. Two dollars. I think it changes depending on what it is, or is it dollar ninety nine across the board? It seems to be across the board, uh, both for races and subclasses. It's two bucks. Yeah, so two bucks across the board for what you want instead of buying the whole source book because yeah. some of them are expensive as heck. Uh, yeah, like I was looking at one earlier. Uh, the the book itself is like fifty bucks, but for ten bucks you get all thirty three races. 
yeah. 30, 30 new races in that one book. So I'm like, oh, well, that might actually be worth it. Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, I think. Mm. Yeah. That one probably will be the next bucket list buy. Uh, well, we're still waiting on two. If you guys want to go ahead and we'll just get started. Uh, so, you guys know me, sorta, Snickerdoodle, uh, Jacob, depending on what you want to call me. Uh, I started D and D about a year ago, I think, maybe a little bit longer than that, and I've gone from player to DM in that time frame, very short-handedly. Uh, been doing small session with Mike here on Friday nights when available, when applicable. And then this is my first DM campaign where I am going to be the DM. Uh, uh, we're going to be working on the schedule here in a second. Uh, what I want to experience is what you guys experience. I want to see how you guys play. I don't want to develop my abilities as a DM and learn from you guys as players and seeing how you interact with each other, uh, your spells, your mechanics and then developing my play style and my command style based off of that. Uh, Mike, you've been a DM for, for forever, so if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to the other individuals, then we'll go from Mike to uh, Teacher and then Sky. literally playing this game for like 31 years like since i was 10 but that doesn't mean i know all the rules i mean they change them like every five years anyway it's a Leo Plurodon, Charlie. but uh it's a i've actually taken up digital sculpting um mostly so i can uh sculpt little miniatures for D and uh like print them out i've already done it a couple of times And uh, for D&D, uh, I do drink and smoke, so I also swear a lot. I don't know. We'll have to go over what's allowed. <laughs> I don't know if there's kids that can hear the uh, the, the alcohol volume somewhere. But uh, for this one, uh, Snickerdoodle, I kind of told you a little bit of the character idea I had. I'm not sure how you want to introduce them, but... I think it'll be hilarious. Uh, I, go ahead and tell us what kind of character you've created for today and how you're doing. One. Venom's joining in. Uh, we're doing uh, introductions right now, Venom. Uh, Mike's going yeah. first. He's introducing his character real quick. I think he's going to continue on. be here in a sec as well. Yeah. But, uh, shows a uh, very and I'm actually not sure how big they are, because it just says they're small. Like, I didn't see anything that was like a chart on how tall or how heavy they are. But, uh, yeah, I was going to make a, a fairy monk is what I picked. Yeah. Make him half grasshopper, so his, uh, his legs and his wings look like a grasshopper. So it's like I was looking through some of the backgrounds and stuff uh, that are on D&D Beyond, and I found one called Plaintiff. And I was just like, wait, what? Like, as in court? And I read into it, and it turns out, that, yes, it's, that's exactly what it is. So that it should be fun to play, or it was a horrible decision. I guess I'll find out uh, uh, during the story. But I wouldn't get the fun of it. Yeah, that's about, uh, about all I got so far for him, but I don't know. should still be useful uh, uh, in a dungeon, I guess. Yeah, I figured I'd uh, uh, work with Snickerdoodle to figure out how to work that into the intro. But that's, uh, that's pretty much it for him. It's not bad for doing that. 
what, two hours ago? Yeah, I was just like literally reading through the backgrounds and I was like, what could I make a good story hook with? Because um, that's something else you do for your DM. It's like if you do have a side quest in mind, like go ahead and add as much detail as you can to uh, to it and then give your DM something to work with for a whole session or more. You could be chasing that side quest. Yeah, that's about it for him. If uh, somebody else wants to go, uh, teacher, if you don't want, if you don't mind going next. Uh, yeah, that's fine. My name is Christina. Um, I am a first-time player, but I have tried to play often. It just never matched the um anybody's schedules so i've created four or five different characters i've never gotten to use i also have listened to a few D D podcasts so at the very least i understand the idea of D D. I just may not know specifics uh, as working in uh, my character is a hill dwarf rogue her name is Avora, or Ava for short. Uh, her backstory, she's kind of uh, like higher up in her clan, but she's only 50 or so years old, which is young for a dwarf. Like, the idea of, I don't know, like, I'd say like a human 18, 19 year old was my guess. Um, she became pregnant with a man from the rival clan and bringing shame to her name and the clan. So she was uh, kind of pushed as an outcast, and she set up a small jewelry shop, like, right on the outskirts of her little town. And uh, one night, as the town was attacked, her infant daughter was snatched from her crib, uh, kidnapped. And so while the town, you know, like, bands together and everything, no one helps my character because she was uh, outcasted and brought shame. And so she is on the um, hunt for her baby. Now this, you know, like that's a little bit of a rougher storyline for some. I can tweak it if it's too much or too triggering for another person, because I do understand that can be rough. Is everyone okay with that backstory? Yes, I'm okay with it. Okay. okay. Uh, are you good there, Tana? Uh, yeah, I, okay. that's about it. <laughs> For now. I've got. Uh, yeah. Sky. Alright, so, I'm Sky. I've been playing D&D pretty consistently for about six years now. I've never okay. DM'd. That's intimidating. But I enjoy playing and just developing different characters and just trying to figure out a good narrative, make a good story, um, find bonds between characters. So I, I, that's what I'm looking for. And I'm going to be playing an uh, Eldrin druid. Her name is Arya Lynn. And she is an orphan. Her parents were killed when she was a teenager. And her mentor kind of took her in, uh, taught her some stuff, and she kind of travels. She's a little bit older now, but early 20s. And she's just really in tune with nature. Um, likes to go camping a lot. Uh, things like that. Pretty simple right now. It's not a lot of backstory. But as she develops, she'll get more, obviously. Yeah. And uh, then we discuss something with your mentor already that will not be discussed in public just yet. Um, uh, that being, does that cover everything you wanted to discuss? Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, uh, Venom and Spence, what we're doing right now is we're going over you guys getting to know each other. Uh, we're determining our schedule. We already decided we're doing it Saturdays because that fits everybody's schedule a little bit better. We're doing every other Saturday. We just need to figure out what time we're actually going to start doing this. Uh, seeing as it's getting close to midnight for you guys, I want to push it a little bit earlier, if that's all right with you guys. That way we can get in in case it does bleed over a little bit more. Uh, the time frame or the uh, requirements for cancelizations, uh, holidays, 
stuff like that, uh, agreeing on rules for role playing, uh, what's going to be used for visuals in the future, uh, establishing a campaign premise, uh, what I what I'm planning as a DM in the future for this campaign, what I expect, what I'm wanting to do, uh, gore, violence, stuff like that, what we're all okay with, uh, character developments, which everyone's already pretty much done, and that takes up most of what this session is going to be. Like, if we all were able to meet at a local library or something, most of session zero is your scheduling time frame, which we've got most of that already accomplished, and our character developments and refinements, which we've already got most of that completely done with. Uh, and I want to hear from you guys what's something you want to experience in D&D, something you want to accomplish as your character, what you want to do, uh, what brought you here, and where you want to be if possible. And that's something we can develop over time. Again, I'm a new DM. You guys are coming in new as well. So it, it's a big party house for all of us. Uh, it doesn't matter which one of you starts off. If just one of you wants to start off real quick with your character, who, who you are, what's bringing you here, and your character. You fall asleep already? <laughs> I don't know if he's got himself muted by mistake or... Freaking nerd. What he's doing with second. His headset's playing up, so just give him a second. Yeah. Uh, while we're waiting on him, if you want to go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, sorry. What? What? What am I uh, talking about? I'm You're good. Trying to find my character sheet. You're good. Uh, <laughs> it's just us getting to know you. The other players getting to know you real quick, uh, your character, uh, what's bringing you to D&D, what you want to experience potentially. Cool. So, uh, I'm Spencer. Um, uh, as Snickerdoodle was mentioned, uh, from the UK. So, uh, it's timing, it might be a bit off uh, might be sometimes it might be times I might be running a little bit late uh, due to work um, as I work in a retail shop uh, called CEX um, uh, what brought me to D&D uh, I've always been interested in uh, playing it but just never was able to find anyone to bring me into the game uh, when I did, they uh, they never walked me through it. They just sort of like got me to make a character, and that was it, and didn't really involve me in the session, uh, which was a bit sad because uh, I was really looking forward to it. Um, so I'm looking forward to just lo experiencing the uh, well all aspects of uh, D and D, and just being able to meet fellow nerds. <laughs> and uh, so, I guess about my character, um, they are a uh, a tiefling uh, with as a warlock um, uh, called uh, Nabisca, um, uh, Nactivist. Um, uh, they, their background is as a haunted one, uh, so uh, essentially, um, and with the and with the heart of darkness, they um, 
they've gone through quite a lot of uh, some trauma, um, and uh, they essentially um, I've been through it. Uh, They don't really, they don't take crap from anyone, but they will, uh, they are generally a, a decent person, but obviously you question to an extent, they, uh, they will snap and uh, show you what's for. Um, their age is, the, the age of 70. Um, they don't uh, run from evil. Uh, if anything, uh, evil will run from them. Uh, they uh, refuse to become a victim or be victimized or allow others to go and feel that way or be in that situation. Um, uh, they uh, will they like to uh, know the enemy's capabilities and weaknesses before rushing into battle. Um, uh, as well, that's the, the smart thing to do, uh, I suppose. Um, uh, they uh, essentially, they try, even though a lot of people view them as a monster, they uh, will destroy the real monsters and won't let anything get in the way. Um, there, there is darkness uh, within them, but uh, they... Uh, we'll never let it uh, run free. They uh, keep their thoughts and discoveries in a journal uh, as they like to think that the journal will be their legacy. Okay. Uh, uh, they can speak to spirits that no one else can see and feel no compassion for the dead uh, as they believe that they are the lucky ones. Um, I didn't, I'll be honest, I didn't really get a chance to go, like, fully, uh, dive into background story, uh, backstory as, uh, I have been getting worked to the bone and, um, I've been a bit sick recently, so I apologize for that. Same, same, uh, and that's okay. That's something we can work on for session zero, uh, session one is more of your backstory and getting that down packed. And how to develop into a team player. Right. Oh, he's not in here. Is he here? Is he back? Uh, who, Is he back? Who, who, okay. There you are. Hello. Oh, fucking finally. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't break things, there won't be an issue. I didn't do anything. I find that hard to believe. Okay. Did you hear most of what was being asked? I, I heard, I heard, yeah, I heard all that. I could hear. I just, you guys just couldn't hear me for some reason. Okay. Uh, Spitz, are you done with your portion? Yeah, I think uh, I'm done for now. Um, obviously, uh, without being able to do the whole backstory and all that sort of stuff, uh, not a lot that I can really go off uh, apart from what I see on my uh, character sheet, but. I'm I'm happy to let the uh, the spotlight go to Venom. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm Michael. Um, I've always wanted to play D and D, but never had the group to play it with. It massive on fantasy games, so it's been right up my alley. Uh, I've been searching for a group, and thankfully, Snickerdoodle invited me to play. Um, I've gone. Straight to my basics and picked a dwarf called Molnar, who is a he is a barbarian, and he's a hill dwarf. He, well, sorry, fighter, not barbarian. And he is a soldier who is taken after his dad, who got killed at war. He is seventy years old, which is fairly young for a dwarf. Um. Didn't get to come up with much of a backstory because I've been sorting everything out with work and that. 
Yeah, you just started a new job. Uh, yeah. That's something we can discuss and fix by session one. You'll have a good backstory and how it's going to integrate into the playing style. Yeah. Yeah. Finish fairly early with work, so it shouldn't be a problem. But with the dwarf, I, it's what I always play because I am short in real life. It just feels natural. <laughs> um, I've gone with the same ginger beard that I rock. Again, just feels natural. Makes sense. And yeah, and his whole thing is he wants to protect the people that can't protect themselves, which is why he set off to be following in his dad's footstep and being a soldier himself. But he also has the personality traits of me of breaking things, which has just been proven, and has a crude sense of humor while he's fighting. Okay. So that's something to tie in yeah. pretty easily. That's about all I've got at the moment. I've gone pretty basic for the first one. Yeah, that works perfectly. Um, so scheduling wise, we've already decided Saturdays is the best day every other Saturday as much as possible. Was that being cancellations? Uh, life happens. Things happen. Uh, if we can. We'll do a session no matter what, and somebody will pick up your character, and we'll go throughout it, and then uh, we'll keep you updated on what has occurred, what has happened, if possible. Uh, we will not play on holidays at all. Yes, ma'am. I will. So if it's a holiday that's happening, we're just not going to play. I don't want to do that to anybody. Spend time with your family. Uh, there's not going to be like, oh, it's New Year's, we're going to play. No, we're not doing that. We're not playing on Christmas. We're not playing on any of those special holidays. I don't want to do that to you guys. I'm not going to do that to myself. Uh, I'm in the guard. Uh, my days are pretty much set on those. It's another reason why I want to do every other Saturday. Sometimes my weekends are spoken for, and sometimes your guys' weekends are spoken for, so I'm not going to take that away from you. Uh just keep an open mind moving forward, and I'll get you guys those dates where I can that I'm not going to be able to do anything, and we'll we'll hit fire from there and figure out a session, but it'll always be on a Saturday. Uh, and this allows us to frame everything, build everything, and BTT or Tailspire. Uh, those are kind of the sessions that I want to do. Um, Visual wise, they have good maps. Uh, Tail Spider has a lot going for it. It's a 3D modeling, so I'll be able to put your markers down there and you'd be able to see your character in real time, potentially. Um, and VVT is all 2D mapping, it's grid work on DD Beyond. You just Join it as normal, and I'll be able to do the same thing. It's just not going to be a 3D model of your stuff. It'll still be your images, though. Uh, does anybody have, uh, time frame wise, any objections to that? No. No. Uh, no. Uh, with, with that being said as well, uh, if we can push it earlier, because I know we're pushing close to midnight, uh, sometimes these sessions might push a little bit longer. I kind of want to do, uh, if we can push it, maybe two hours earlier, if possible. If not, it's okay. Uh, you guys join in when you join in that aspect. But if we can do a three to four, uh, I'll say two to four hour session, potentially, that might look better in the future. Uh, I don't, in all honesty, I don't see us pushing past level five. As of right now, uh, just the time frame and everything that I'm expecting out of us and you guys, uh, I would expect your characters to hit level 5 uh, towards the end of our session. And if it goes further than that, then your characters would potentially hit level 10 
depending on how far along you guys want to go. Um, now that's getting into the campaign management and what I'm what I'm wanting, what we're all wanting. Uh, a lot of this is going to be homebrew. None of the cities you guys are going to hear are in the books. I'm making it up as I go in that aspect. I will use music when able to use music. Uh, uh, the gore and violence in all honesty, session one, if you guys are okay with gore and violence, it's going to be pretty graphic uh, almost right from the get-go. Uh, I think I've given everybody the tidbit of where everyone's being called in for special events. Um, the realms coming together kind of deal. There, There is a significant event that could occur. And I can tweak that depending on what you guys are comfortable with. Is everybody comfortable with gore and violence and adult yeah. themes? Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, there's only one thing that I, I have a hard line on, and that's rape. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Other than that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Other than that, yeah, we're good. That, that'll be a, that's a hard no. That is not going to happen in this campaign. Uh, character developments, that's something we're going to... In all honesty, character developments, uh, I think, is more of a baseline of your starting race and your class. And then after that, it tweaks throughout the campaign. You you might get bored of your character and then you want to change it up. We'll hit that as we cross that bridge, if you guys want. Uh, what I want to experience, again, is just you guys developing as your characters and working together. Um, so, trying to make sure I hit all the points. Uh, again, most of this is going to be homebrew. The maps are going to be different each session. Uh, your first camp, again, I'm bringing you all into a big city straight from the beginning. Everyone's in a big city. Uh, I think uh, we'll say London, mid-century. Giant castle and everybody's coming in for the festival. An event is going to occur at some point that really drives you all together. Yes, sir. What's up? Do you need me to fix that for you? Yeah. Okay, come here. Uh, <laughs> what was that saying? Who are you talking to? A whole bunch of people, buddy. I'm talking to a whole bunch of people. Uh, what, what an event's going to occur that's going to drive the party to kind of band together right from the get-go. And it's going to tie in both uh, Sky and Tina's uh, characters almost immediately. It's everybody else that's going to get kind of thrust because they're going to realize, you guys are going to realize that you need to work together to fix the issue uh, right from the get-go and that that's really after that event is going to how do you say it how do you word these is that is that wrong well, this one's good but this one's slow. well i don't know how to fix that it's just the string those pants are too big for you but nope stay over there uh Ahead. What do you want? What do you want? Um, I want? The same thing Violet has? What do Violet have? Okay, never mind. Go away. Go away. Are you ready to eat? Okay, it's in the refrigerator. What does Violet have? Go ask her. Go ask her to show you. And there's some in the refrigerator. Um, <laughs> kids. Homebrew, character developments. Uh, there's going to be a significant event for the third time, a significant event that will force two characters to help each other out almost immediately for various, very different reasons for this. Uh, and then I want to talk to you, Sky, about that more behind the scenes and Tina as well behind the scenes on how we're going to develop those interactions with you individually, not together. Uh, and then, as well as Michael, Venom down there, I, I your character interaction is more, you are a city guard in this area already, uh, and I'm going to talk to you about how we're going to develop that for the first session, and from the first session, we're just going to go on. 
I am looking at six to nine months, max a year. I don't want to go further than a year. And you guys are going against the big bad evil guy or big bad evil group as what you perceive them to be. And you'll be at level five at that point. Uh, once that fight is done and over with or whatever is going on in that session, we'll develop going past that for maybe potentially another big bad evil guy in the same universe and the same campaign using the same titles and all that and your character's going from 5 to 10 and we'll do uh, the same level cap iteration so 1 through 5 6 through 10, 11 through 15 15 or 16 to 20 if that's what you guys want to do as a group Does anybody have any input? No, everything sounds good. No. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, sounds all good. Uh, and then, uh, I know some of the characters are kind of silly. Some of them are more serious. Um, I don't plan on being overly silly or overly serious. I think <clears throat> I'm coming into it with an open mind. I want everybody else to try and come in with an open mind. Uh, if it gets serious, it gets serious. If it stays silly. The whole time I say silly is all, the whole time. I'm not really opposed to any play style. Um, most everybody's used the basic D&D &D builder. You haven't ventured too far off. If you see something you like or hear something, if you're watching a podcast or a YouTube or something out there and you're like, hey, I really like this, bring it up and we'll work around it, see if we can't put it into your character or whatever is out there. Um, Voices. Oh, it just got dark. I think it's scary to storm or something. Uh, if you guys want to do voices, work on it. Uh, I am going to throw voices out there. Uh, Mike knows I do voices a lot every now and then, depending on the character development. Uh, I like doing voices. I like being goofy. I'm not going to stick to it, but I'm going to throw them in there every now and then when I remember to do it. Uh, one of my one of my personal characters. His name is Bill. He's a hill dwarf. He's a hillbilly. And I try to play him as a hillbilly. I don't use a Scottish or a British accent when I do it. I use like a hillbilly accent when I play Bill the hill dwarf because that's how I wanted him to be. So he's more of like somebody you would meet in the Appalachian Mountains versus somebody you would meet in England. Does anybody want to do a voice? Uh, I would probably do like nothing crazy, but at least enough to distinguish when I am speaking versus my character is speaking. So I don't have to verbally say, hi, this is Christina speaking instead of my character. Okay. You can talk third person too. You guys can talk however you want. Just like let it be known prior to as much as possible. In here. Why can I not see that? Uh, food, language, uh, I feel like everybody's kind of on the same page when it comes to land stuff. Uh, bathroom breaks, uh, take them as needed. If we're in the middle of a fight and you have to go, then you have to go just say, hey, I cannot hold it any longer. I need to go right now. Fair enough. Uh, now, is this speaking for people or their characters? You know what? I'm just imagining, like, hold on with Mr. Dragon. I gotta go pee pee. <laughs> Uh, I was, I was speaking mainly for you guys, but you know what? If your character is in, if you're in character, and you're like, "Hey, I can't hold it anymore. I'm gonna draw my drawers." We'll react to that and just play off of that. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's like, would that be deception, or are you actually gonna like pee your pants? Like, well, that's true. I mean, it's a trick. 
Yeah, you could trick the, the enemy. You're like, okay, I need to pee. You can press on one second and then just hit them in the face. I I will honestly. It might work. I tried it honestly. You know, what? I will honestly roll with it, and we'll see how that how that works in the future. <laughs> um, I found my new tactic. You just uh, you to just say like, I gotta go potty. Yeah, like I'm <laughs> right right I found my tactic for fights. <laughs> Shit your pants. No one's going to fight you if you shit your pants. Yeah, I'm like, that's freaking hilarious. I, of course you would ask that question, but no. <laughs> uh, like uh, like prestidigitation, it says you can instantly clean or soil yep. one object. I that is shit my pants. <laughs> very true. Some just shit their pants and they'll stop fighting. Right. That is very true. Just cool to learn self-defense. Yeah, like, oh, fight. I've got to go potty. <laughs> Clean it right up afterwards. It doesn't even matter. Thank you. I just told her. Go with her. <laughs> um, are they drinks, food, all that? Uh, it's really up to you guys. Uh, I obviously don't have an issue. You guys can see my live stream. Uh, I don't have an issue with drinks at all. I have literally behind my right shoulder, I have a whole shelf full of drinkage. Uh, that is a nice selection, not gonna lie. Yeah, I made a comment the minute I saw it. I'm like, you have a bar right there. Yeah. Okay. That's what Come I in the middle of a session and just see, just like making yourself like a cocktail type yeah. thing. Yeah. No, I, as long as sick of those guys doing stupid shit and start drinking to make himself feel better. Oh wait, he's gonna make a drinking yeah, game. Yeah, it's more like, like shot. Yeah. Every time it's we roll, shot. it's gonna be a shot every time one of our character wants to go toilet in the middle of a fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, if you have a string of, because we know a player that. Mike, we know a player that has a string of like really bad, bad rolls. Uh, if you're rolling like nat ones repeatedly, we'll take like a five minute break and then come back to that. If everyone's all right with that, like just take five. Everybody walk away and come back because if you're rolling like ten nat ones, like there's something wrong. We need to fix that. Like, That's rare. Yeah. Yeah. How, yeah. how is that going to work? Are we just rolling on D and D Beyond using their die? Are we using our own? Are you rolling for us? Uh, you will roll your own rolls. Uh, if we're using DTT, it will show up through. Okay. Uh, it, it's in the chat channel. It'll show up. It'll let me know what you rolled. Uh, I don't want to have to look. You just say, hey, I rolled a seven or whatever. Like, uh, me and Mike, we were playing. I could see most of the rolls, and I'll let you add whatever you think's needed, like, for that. Like, I, if I remember correctly, you were adding your uh, shield modifier to that, correct, Mike? What's that? Uh, the last session we did, you were adding your modifiers to that because it was only showing up as, uh, like, a 17. You were adding your modifiers, which had five and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, try to get it as accurate as you can, because even if you get your butt kicked, it's not like the end of the, the campaign. Like, you can literally die in this game, and it's okay. Yeah. It, if We'll figure out a way to get through everything. It's not an issue. I'm here to have fun. You guys are here to have fun. I don't want to be that DM that's like, oh, I'm just here to kill. Like, why? Why are yeah, you being like a douche? Yeah, like we uh, we always talk about it with every session we get into. Like, yeah, the more you can include your your character's backstory, I mean, not only do you get more involved in the campaign, but that that does help your DM flesh out the campaign because you know now you've got a, a group of bandits to go after that he didn't even have in the story before, or whatever. Which, uh, so the group of bandits right off the get go, it's. The main focus is going to be the two of you that I've already mentioned. Uh, and that's just the way your backstories are written already. Uh, and that, 
but that's going to drive the rest of the group as well. It's just more focused on your guys' backstories. Uh, and I'll honestly, it's going to drive the entire campaign for that. Like, we'll, we'll find our own reasons to come along. I mean, yes. It's like, you can rescue your family. Oh, screw that. It means nobody's paying. Yeah. <laughs> Like, no, we're not going to bail on the adventure just because it's like a wait, a side quest that takes us like two towns away. Oh, man. Well, let's go do it. Yeah, let's not split the party. Yeah, it's a, a good, good way. Sure. Yeah, it's a good sure way to die. Uh, we yeah. do it all the time, don't we, Mike? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, parts get chopped off. Some people get like sent to other dimensions. Some people yeah, have like, kids with dragons. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who that was. Yeah, and sometimes they take off back to the planet you just escaped and probably set up their own evil empire. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know what happened there. Yeah. It's like every time you split the party, something bad happens, and you're just like, ah, whatever. You're just leaving chaos in your wake. <sighs> yeah, and sometimes you have to roll up a new character because you get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it sucks, but uh, yeah, on the rare occasion it happens. Anybody who's played this game for like six months has already got like ten more characters written up and they want to play every one. A rule of thumb that I usually do is create a backup character. You never know. Yeah, everyone should. Uh, we haven't discussed that, so everyone should make a backup character just in case. <clears throat> and it can be the exact same premise, literally the same character sheet, make a new name. Or it can be something completely different that you're like, you know what, I want to play a warlock, or I want to play a paladin, or I want to play this next. Just do it on a whim, and if it gets used, it gets used. If it's not, it doesn't. Does everyone have a good warm and fuzzy on things now? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. Okay, sweet. So for session one, we will shoot for the 20th. Uh, I'm going to start working. Uh, oh, so everyone's aware, Mike is going to be the assistant DM in the future. So if I don't have the answer, he'll probably have the answer. Or if I'm unable to pull something up, He'll be able to pull it up. I know he also has Tailspire. Uh, so he might be running the maps versus me in that aspect. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to talk to you about that. Because you, um, you can build your map on Tailspire. Invite us all into the campaign and then just mark me as the DM. Yeah. I can uh, manipulate the characters on the board and stream it on Discord. Uh, usually that's like... If the DM's got too much crap to watch or their computer isn't up to running Tailspire and streaming and all that crap at the same time. So we'll play that by ear on those occasions, which I only have the laptop, I only have one screen. So that'll probably be the case where he's running that and I'm doing more of the admin side of it. Uh, yeah, I, I figured I'd, I'd talk to you at some, about it some yeah. tonight. Hot. Look, I did that for this Jordan and Drew and Ian, and it worked out okay. Yeah, it's worked out so far. Every time I've seen it, it's gone good. Yeah, they, they could just keep the adventure notes and, like, monster sheets up, and then I manipulated the map. So everybody could, that had Tailspire could still move their characters. And then I'd move everybody else, and you could actually see what's going on in the fight. And it is 3D, so if your fight goes uh, vertical... You know, you're fighting in a cave or something, some trees or something. You can't actually move up and down. Yeah, you can. That's the fun part. Being 3D, like, you can do anything you're thinking you can do. You can actually do it. Uh, whereas BTT, it's more... It's 2D, it's map, you're moving marker tokens around, and it's just uh, you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit. 
Yeah, it's it's great though because it's more accessible. Basically, if your computer can run the internet, you can run it. Yeah, it's literally if you go if you're on D and D Beyond and you're looking at your character sheet and the campaign and it says join B BTT right there. It's right there. Right, and you usually you just want to know how far you are from something, so a two D map does the job. Uh, yeah, as long as everyone's got a good warm and fuzzy, I think we'll call it here for session zero. Uh, in the future, if we can do it a little bit earlier, if uh, Venom and Spence are able to do it a little bit earlier, we'll do that. If not, we'll carry, we'll work that out in the future. We'll decide. I'll say. The Wednesday before our session, we'll have a good detail on when we're actually going to start. If that makes sense to everybody. Yep, sounds good to me. All right. Yep. Sweet. All right. Well, then, uh, Snirk and Doodle, unless you had some questions for me, I'll pop off of here. Yeah, yeah. You're you're good to go. Uh, and then we'll, me and you will continue our Tailspire adventure and everything else. Sweet. Take it easy, guys. I'm Bye. I think we're all going to have a lot of fun. I really do. Yes, I already like the bathroom roll. <laughs> yeah, I was like. I'm definitely using that as a tactic. I uh, God. <laughs> I'm gonna have to not focus on strength for my fucking fighter and start going on deception stuff instead. It's gonna be a thing. Uh, uh, remember, we can just throw you at the enemy. <laughs> you are not throwing me. Uh, how free uh, are you and Venom and Spencer tomorrow? Um, I am at work at five o'clock in the morning. I finish at three o'clock, so I'll be home by about four, half four, which for you would be about eleven, half eleven ish. Let me just check my rotor. Uh, so, 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 go on, baby. So, so I'm at work until quarter past four, so I travel back will be roughly about an hour, so I'll probably be back around between five and six uh, in the evening. Okay. So I'm trying to think when that would be for your time. Okay. Five hours before, so about midday. So we'll both be free around midday-ish for you, guys, for you anyway. Well, heck. Makes it easy for you. Uh, Teacher Tina and Sky, if we pushed it, if you guys are all, all right with that, if we pushed it to 3 p.m. EST, would that be good for you guys? On the 20th? Yeah, it should be. I'll post it to about 8 o'clock for us, so yeah, that'll be great. Because then even if, it, even if it goes to 4 hours, that takes me to midnight and get 5 hours sleep before work. Okay, uh, that'll probably work a lot easier. 3 p.m. And that gives you guys time to unwind after work and such. And then if you're a little bit late after that, like it's perfectly fine. But it gives us more time to uh, run into those longer sessions, potentially. Yep. Uh, yeah, that, that works perfectly, I think, for everybody. I'll let Mike know because he's already gone. Uh, and then tomorrow when you guys get home, if you want to shoot me a quick message and then we'll hop on voice chat and we'll go over details of your backstories and we'll get that hashed out immediately no worries as long as nobody has any like major objections i'll call the session there uh i'll listen to what i can uh pick up some more notes from what i already have and do some developments for session one Everybody good? Yeah. All right. All right. Sweet. I just want to make sure. I'm going to roll a D D20 to see if I can go to the bathroom. I'm going to the bathroom. <laughs> Matt Wan pisses himself. Uh, that might be a thing. 
Oh god. I'm already gonna hate that. <laughs> I feel like that one would be worse than just pissing yourself. I feel like that'd be like diarrhea blowout up to his hair. I'm going to have to like figure that out now. Yeah. We haven't even started a proper session and we've already made him start working different mechanics in. Yeah. We create a table. I, I guarantee when he set this session up, he didn't think he'd have to figure something out so he can roll for deception on using the bathroom. <laughs> I, I didn't at all. That was never a thought process, but that's okay. Uh, D20 to urinate yourself or crap yourself. <laughs> what? Yeah, can I get a uh, tear sheet on tear list on shitting your pants? <laughs> yeah, like... I have. Wait, I have a question. Can I do the South Park tactic of then using it to throw at an enemy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like my strength's high enough to do it. So you're you're potentially wanting to crap in the middle of a battlefield, pick up your own turd and then throw it at somebody. That is correct. Enemy, <laughs> <laughs> probably he'll wait. He'll do it at camp. He'll pick it up and wait for the perfect opportunity to throw it. <laughs> What if I'm just gonna be bored one day? Go, which one of my, which one of the group do I want to throw it at this time? Gosh. Just don't ask what's in my backpack, and we'll be okay. We can work that into your backstory. We can work that into your backstory. That just sounds more like a simple athletics check, though. Stig, Stig, can I please have a pouch just to store it and to throw at people? So I was, I was thinking about oh, like some no. type of pouch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna don't I, don't anger me. I'll get the crap pouch out. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, we're gonna. I can already tell that's gonna get loved at me. I swear to God. You try throw my dwarf. It's getting thrown at you. I actually I have a thing for that, and we'll discuss that for your backstory tomorrow. I I um, I know how to tie that in now. At at I'm gonna get thrown at someone at some point. Definitely. I can already see it. Uh, it's way worse than you think. All right, I'm gonna call it there. Uh, <laughs> I will, I will see you guys on the twentieth around three to four p.m. Okay. Right. You guys have a good weekend. You too. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. See ya. God. <sighs> oh man. Uh, Who's in chat right now? Who who do who do I have? Uh, Weeping, how are you doing? Can you hear me, Bob? Why is this not working for me? Amelia, thank you for dropping by. Thank you, thank you for the lurks. I'm good. I don't know if you guys could hear me or not. I have to go to the bathroom real quick. Give me a second. I will be right back.
I'm sorry, I backed. I am back. I overturned. Subscriber. Willow. You still in here, bud? Who is Vino? guys are disgusting. I hope you can hear me still. Yeah, J. Mikey. Who is in here? Amelia, J. Mikey, Weeping, Cleric, Phantom. Squid. Amelia Roz Sky was in there. That's not how you spell that at all. I'm echoing. To develop a I have to develop a D, &D session or D, D role for crapping your pants there's a delay I don't want to do that I'm not just crapping your pants using the bathroom In, in session. It's such a annoying thing to do. What's up, little lady? Yeah. Okay, I'll stop. What are you looking for? Go ahead. I learned anything from that session zero talking to you. Uh, it's that I'm gonna have to have my drinks set up beforehand, so I might go get the pre-made stuff.
goodness. To be a little bit bougie. Truffle oil, Parmesan fries. Top tier. The camera's over here. Where am I looking? Where's the camera? Okay, if I look directly back, I get. I'm giving myself feedback, which is annoying. I'm getting that glare. If I do this, I just can't see anything, so we're not going to do that. So if I'm looking at myself. God, I need a hair. I got to get a haircut tomorrow. Monday. All right. I called my session. And an hour 15, I think it did really well. I think everything's good, set in stone. It's set on wax paper, we're ready to be burned. I'm going to call this session here now, and I'm going to go back to playing this. I don't know if I'm going to play it live or not. Uh, whoever's in here, thank you for stopping by, and we're going to continue to do this. In the future, I hope everyone was able to hear everything that was going on. I know some people were having issues. I might have to live stream from Discord directly, potentially. We'll figure that out. All right, thank you guys for coming by. I'm going to end this session. Meow. Maybe. Wrong thing. No, I'm not. Who, who's online? We're going to raid out to somebody. Uh, let me figure out who's online. Stone is Hyperwolf. No staff. Venom? Venom? Nope, that's not how you spell that. V E N. That's a W. V E N. Maybe you're not online. You're not. Push my glasses up. You're not. Okay. We're going to go to Battlefield 2042. How do you spell that? K-O. Only two of us. I don't know who the other viewer is. Pretty sure one of them's me. Is that how that works? I don't know. I don't know how that works. It's okay. We're going to, dude.